Today we're going to be talking about topic 15, which has to do with the brain. We're going to go into some points where we talk about the brain as well as the nerves and the spinal cord. So point of the brain is to process information into the nervous system. There's major areas of the brain, the cerebrum, cerebellum, brainstem, and all of these are for um, responsible for processing and relaying information. So the reason you're able to move your limbs is because of your brain processing the information and relaying it to your hands. The spinal cord is the main communication link between the brain and the rest of the body. So that's how you tell the rest of your limbs to move or how you process any time you're injured or anything like that. The control point of the central nervous system is the brain. So this is the main part. If anything happens to that, the rest of it is ruined. Um, information processing is the brain's task. So feeling heat, feeling cold, feeling pain, feeling um, anything you, that you feel through your skin um, is a result of the spinal cord and the nerves everywhere processing that information, taking in that information, and then going to your brain. So it's constantly changing by its interactions in the environment. So if there's loud noises, your brain's going to adjust. If it's quiet, your brain's going to adjust. If it's too bright, too dark, any of those things, your brain is constantly adjusting to those interactions. You have 31 pairs of spinal nerves that branch out from the spinal cord. So you have spinal cord right here, and all of these are 31 pairs of um, nerves coming out. Um, one cool fact is that, um, actually some of y'all wanted me to tell you another cool fact, but one cool fact that I'm telling you is, um, having to do with the, um, the funny bone. So anytime you hit your elbow and you're like, oh, my funny bone, it's actually not your funny bone that's hurting. There's an ulnar nerve that runs through there. And whenever you hit it, you basically hit that nerve. And that's why you get that numbness and that straight pain all the way through. Um, I think Samayo wanted me to tell you that um, if you touch the brain, you don't feel it. Like if anybody just pokes your brain, you don't feel that because um, there's no nerves on the brain. So there's no stimulus that you feel. Um, also, if you ever have to have brain surgery, you're awake during it because they have to make sure they don't touch the wrong thing and mess it up. Okay, so certain kinds of information include many reflexes, so these are processed directly in the spinal cord. So a reflex is any quick automatic response to a stimulus. If somebody throws a ball at you, when you're not expecting it, you try to catch it. Um, when you're scared, things like that, that all causes you to have a reflex or a reaction to it. The largest part of the brain is the human, um, the largest part of the human brain is the cerebrum. That's this whole part right here. Think cerebro. Um, so it's a responsible for any voluntary or conscious activity. So that's anything you're choosing to do. You're choosing to close your eyes. If you're choosing to open your mouth, if you're choosing to move your hands, any of those things are conscious things that you want done. It's also the site of intelligence, learning, and judgment. So you have two different parts of the brain. You have the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The corpus callosum right here is what connects both hemispheres together. If you cut that halfway through, your brain can't make the connections to move certain parts like other parts sometimes they cut it for a variety of reasons when there's a major issue happening um you guys can research that on your own um each hemisphere deals with diff uh, the opposite side of the body i know i told you guys this um when i talked about strokes in topic 13 um if anything happens to the right side of the hemisphere, then it's gonna affect the left side. And if anything happens to the left hemisphere, it's gonna affect the right side of your body. So each hemisphere is divided into different uh, lobes. You need to know this for your EOC, so make sure you remember these. So you have your frontal lobe. Uh, frontal lobe is for evaluating consequences, making judgments, and forming plans. Your frontal lobe doesn't actually get, um, it doesn't finish developing until you're 25, which is why as a teenager and young one, you tend to make bad judgments without thinking ahead. That's because of your frontal lobe. So you can blame it a little bit on your frontal lobe. Not completely though. Um, then you have the parietal lobe, which is just behind the frontal lobe. It's like on the top part of your head on the sides. Your temporal lobe is right where your temples are. 
so near your eyebrows, and then your occipital lobe is in the back of your head. The temporal lobe is associated with hearing and smell, occipital lobe is associated with vision, and the parietal is associated with reading and speech. The second largest re uh, region is the cerebellum. That's this part right here that you see. The cerebellum is um, about muscle and joint position. So um, basically it just means that uh, the whole idea of, it's like learning to ride a bike or learning, just like riding a bike, that whole idea is muscle memory. Like you're able to uh, move and do things a certain way because you just develop that muscle memory. It's in the cerebellum. It also has other sensory inputs. So um, like I said, this helps you coordinate and balance the actions of these muscles. So that's a result of helping, like just knowing exactly your depth perception, how much to take a step, um, how far to reach out your hand to get certain things, that's your cerebellum at work. The brain stem, which is here, and I'm gonna go back to the other photo, it's this part right here that's yellow. There's two parts to this. Um, when you're in, if you're in my classroom, I have a giant rainbow brain on the wall, um, and they're all colored different things for each of the lobes, as well as the brain stem the cerebellum and the, the pons and the medulla, which I'll get into in a second. So the brainstem is separated by three regions. You only need to know the pons and the medulla. So each of these regions regulates the flow of information from the brain. So this is what's helping any involuntary action. So it regulates your blood pressure, your heart rate, your breathing, swallowing while you're sleeping. Um, it keeps the body functioning when you're when you pass out or whether you're injured or you're sleeping like in general. If your brainstem gets affected, then you can't control those things because you physically cannot think about blinking, breathing, and making sure your blood pressure is fine all at the same time while doing other things. Like our brain doesn't work like that. So just to let you guys know, the pond is usually right here. It's a bumpy part right here in the brainstem. Um, and then the medulla is down here. This whole thing is a brainstem. So the pons and the medulla are part of the brainstem. So here, um, the reaction, the brain reacts to excessive dopamine levels and it reduces the receptors of neurotransmitters. So here you're seeing addiction in the brain. Um, so control has to do with anybody who doesn't, isn't addicted, but these are people that are addicted. Now, in a way to give you guys an example of this is by saying that, um, Dopamine is what makes you happy. So dopamine and serotonin are neurotransmitters that make you feel happy. They give you those feelings of content when you touch a puppy and you're playing with a puppy or you're playing with a cat, whatever it may be that makes you happy. Those That's dopamine and serotonin giving you those levels. So I always give an example of numbers with dopamine levels. So let's say your normal reaction whenever you see a puppy or a cat is 10. So let's say you get 10 dopamine for every time you pet an animal. This isn't an actual number. This is just to give you guys an example. But let's say you do one of these drugs that um, make you addicted. So if you do cocaine, then um, now when you do cocaine, instead of 10 dopamines, your body is now like, I'm at 13 dopamine. This feels so much better than when I play with a puppy. Now, when you come back down off of cocaine, your body goes back down to whatever number it is, and then you see the puppy and you're back to 10. That doesn't feel the same as at level 13. So you want to go back to that level. So when you do, you go and you do cocaine again, you're at 13 again. But if 13 feels good, what does 15 feel like? And then what does 20 feel like? And then you keep going higher and higher until either you overdose or you continuously stay at that 13 or 15 and just need to be at that level or you're just not happy anymore. I hope you understood that. If not, bother Samayo and I so we can help you guys understand that. So these are the different parts that you need to know for the EOC. Um, we're going to have you guys probably color or draw it into your notebook so you guys can know this for your tests. So the main functions of the nervous system, um, it's a taking an internal and external environment, processing that information, and then responding to it. So if you're really hot in 
wherever you are, and your body will basically respond to that heat and cause it to sweat to cool yourself down. So you have the peripheral nervous system, the central nervous system. Um, both these systems help absorb processing like uh, information. So peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves and supporting cells. The central nervous system has to do with the brain and the spinal cord. So function of neurons, um, these are transmitted th by cells called neurons. So these impulses, um, so sensory neurons carry impulses from the sense organs, so your eyes, your nose, your ears, and they all go towards the spinal cord and the brain. So then we react. Loud noises make us flinch away from that noise, things like that. Now this is what a nerve looks like. Um, you have the central body right here, the cell body, which is the, the nucleus is right here. Um, these are the dendrites, and what's really cool about dendrites is they don't really touch, but when they're talking to each other, basically this is how your body transmits from nerve to nerve, or neuron to neuron. Um, this is how they, you make memories. So basically, these dendrites will be facing each other, and they kind of send electrical impulses through them to give information to the next neuron and pass it on. Um... Then you have this part right here that's the axon. This myelin sheath is basically insulating it. So think about actual wires. If you touch the wire, like the metal part of the wire, you get electrocuted. So it has this wrapping around it that's called insulation. Same thing here. The myelin sheath is insulation as the impulses come through. Um, and these axon terminals are um, what share the information. Now, when you have multiple sclerosis, basically the myelin sheath kind of, um, your body attacks the myelin sheath and then these impulses, um, those electrical impulses get spread throughout the body and it causes uh, lesions in the brain. So neurons can have dozens of dendrites, usually only have one axon. This is, like I said, this is how we react to different things. So uh, some nerves contain fibers for only a few neurons. Some contain hundreds and thousands. Um, when Alzheimer's, when people have Alzheimer's, basically these dendrites start shriveling up and no more connections are made. So here is where I was kind of talking about like the sharing of information. If you see it right here. So this neurotransmitter is sending out. These neurotransmitters can be dopamine and serotonin. They can also be a m multiple other things, but you guys don't need to know it to that level. But that's how you um, information gets shared between your neurons, between the axon terminal and the dendrites.